Today we bring the second season of the Colorado Rockies franchise to an end. The offseason will be streamed on Friday night, and I can't wait for season three. We will get to the Rockies' final game of the season here shortly, but the double-A Hartford Yard Goats are still playing playoff baseball. We'll start with them here against the Richmond Flying Squirrels in the double-A Northeast Championship Series. Let's take it to the fourth inning where David Geronimo at the plate watches that one go all the way to the backstop. Two in scoring position, two down, and a 3-0 count. In this situation, you got to give your best player the green light. And David Geronimo sends it out to left field, way back, and a Hartford lead 5-0 after the three-run homer. We've spent enough time with David Geronimo this year to know how special of a prospect he is. And I don't see him playing a lot more minor league baseball in this series. Certainly double A. This should be the end of that for him. And the Hartford Yard Goats easily take game one. Geronimo's home run helps them build a lead. And ultimately they didn't even need that. Winning 10 to nothing. Great start for Ryan Rollison. So let's go into game two where Richmond does take the early lead. Michael Toglia is so good in that game five matchup in the previous episode. He does not take a swing at that 3-0 fastball. Instead gets an even better one, 3-1. That one is gone. Michael Toglia, 399 feet. I'm hoping that he can be playing at AAA next year. I think he's one of the more intriguing power bats in the minor league system. And he plays first base, switch hitter, really exciting player. Now, unfortunately, that's all Hartford was doing in this game. So we're not going to spend much time going through it. Beyond Toglia's nice play here in the ninth inning, nice flip over to second, return to first. They do convert the double play. But Richmond just put up too much offense in this game, and they quickly even the series. And this was against Mickey Littlefield, who has been really up and down, but it's his first professional season. And I thought this was better experience for him than just getting the low development at single A all year. So those first two games are split, taking us to game 162 for Colorado. So we'll come back to Hartford's playoff run after we go through the Rockies finale. Five losses in a row coming into this game. 67 wins will fall short of the goal I set of 70. Herman Marquez takes the mound in game 162. We have the Cincinnati Reds, and I know like every episode recently has been in Coors. I'm sure we'll get some more games and other ballparks next season. I hope to do that pretty quickly. A line out here to start the day for Marquez. Two batters later, here is Jesse Winker getting ahead in the count. Marquez hits the outside with the changeup, and the count runs full. Payoff pitch. That's a drive out to right, and no one's going to chase after it. Jesse Winker into the bullpen. one nothing Cincinnati. Just missed his spot there, 3-2, number 23 on the season for Winker. And for the Reds, they pitch Sonny Gray here in the finale, a 3.77 ERA. And we get things going with the Rockies. It's Connor Joe, right center and down for extras. He's been very good at getting extra base hits, only hitting like 233. But he hasn't played for the big league team all year and he's close to the top in doubles. We have Charlie Blackman, who's been great in the second half of the year, playing really well at home. And this one's hammered down the line, but he's a bit out in front, it is foul. Couple pitches later, two and two. How about the slurve? And Charlie can't connect, strike three. That brings up Javi Baez, who's putting in a 223 season. He did just recently hit his 30th home run. A chopper up the middle this time, and the side is retired in the first one nothing Cincinnati. In the second inning, a Eugenio Suarez 1-0 going the other way. Rockies playing the shift, and he beats it 
all the way to the right field wall, a leadoff double. Next batter, Nick Senzel, and this one gets away from Dom Nunez. Suarez takes third base. Senzel, 2-1, there's a good sinker from Marquez. Count eventually runs full, and then it's the sinker, 3-2, strike three looking. Marquez trying to pitch around the double and the wild pitch. Luis Torrens, this time blocked by Nunez. Torrens not chasing, and this count runs full. Ground ball over at short, going to score Suarez, and Baez almost makes a really nice throw, but it pulls Connor Joe off the bag. That's a hit and a run for Cincinnati. Let's take this one into the third inning. Mike Moustakis, 2-0, there's a slider catching the outside of the zone, 2-1 from Marquez, there's the slider once again, another full count, and the 3-2 is drilled to right field, looking up, and this one is flying out, another homer for the Reds, this for Moustakis, number 35 on the season, and that was a pitch on the outer half too that he just muscled Pulled it to right field. That's a strong swing. In the fourth inning, Suarez up again. There's a base hit to left field. Marquez not usually giving up this much hard contact. Senzel now deep left center. Hampson so fast, he gets under it, gets to catch his breath, and then makes the catch at the wall. That's pretty cool. One on, one down. Terenz, this one over Baez in the left center field. Jonathan India at the plate. Runners in scoring position now with two away. Marquez trying to limit the damage here early in the game. And India chases the pitch in the dirt. And that's strike three. Three nothing Reds with the Rockies not really getting much going. The Connor Joe double was the only hit to this point. Let's go bottom four. Sonny Gray cruising and striking out Charlie Blackman this time with the slider. Here's Javi Baez, a 2-2 count. He'll take the fastball inside. And this count runs full. And Gray walks him. Finally, another base runner for the Rockies. That brings up Josh Fuentes. He gets ahead in the count 2-0. Gets a pitch to drive. It's going to right, and it's a pretty routine play. 3-0 through 4. Garrett Hampson at the plate. Bottom of the fifth inning. 0-1. Chopper to short. Hampson with great speed, but the bare hand throw helps save some time to record the second out. Then Dom Nunez. Slider misses high. Dom's been very good at reaching base this season, and his patience again pays off with the two-out walk. We take Marquez out of the game. After five innings, and Sam Hilliard off the bench delivers a base hit into right. Runner in scoring position now, and we go to Rymel Tapia, one of the best players we've had this season, but he's out in front of the slurve. Sonny was not throwing that much, and it's just an easy pop-up for the catcher. Sonny Gray with a really good start to this game. We have to go to the bullpen. Chichi Gonzalez in the sixth. He strikes out Nick Senzel. Rockies trying to get this zero off the scoreboard. Here's bottom six, and Charlie Blackman won't strike out this time. He drills the slurve over the center fielder's head. He's in at second base, a one-out double, and a runner in scoring position, Javi Baez. Trying to finish the season strong. Two and two, and there's the slurve right on the outside corner. Baez way out in front. Just the third strikeout for Gray. Then it's Fuentes 2-0 again. Pitch to hit. Can't do much with it. Rockies scoreless through six. Top seven, Chichi Gonzalez stays in the game. And this one, launch to left center. Luis Torrens having a great day at the plate. Third hit, seventh homer of the season, 468. Way out of here. 4 nothing Cincinnati. And then it's Jesse Winker down the line. And Hampson takes a bad angle. I thought he cut that off. Instead, they're going to wave the runner around. The throw is offline. It's 5 nothing. Bad defense there on my part. 
Mike Moustakis, he sends another one deep right center at the wall. And this time it hits that high bullpen fence. And another run comes home. It's 6-0. Reds hitting the ball all over the park today. While Sonny Gray pitches the shutout into the seventh. A base hit for Brendan Rodgers. And a couple batters later, off the bench is Ryan McMahon. And the shutout is broken. Deep drive, way out, 458, number 16 on the year for Ryan McMahon. Good to see a little bit of power here at least for the Rockies, but a long way to go. Top of the eighth, two on, two down, another one drilled. This time it's Jonathan India off of Sir Anthony Dominguez, who really hasn't finished the year all that strong. All in all, great season for him, but the last few outings that we focused on have not been great. Bottom of the eighth. Javi's going to reach one more time this season with the base hit. We have two on again. Fuentes is getting opportunities and pitches to do something with and just not getting anything accomplished. On we go to the ninth inning. Is this the last inning for Michael Givens in a Rockies uniform? We'll have to see. It's an easy one, two, three, ninth for him. Nine pitches. Good job. And we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. TJ Antone on the mound, and Dom Nunez right into the shift, and that is your season. The Rockies drop six games in a row to close out year two and end the season with 67 victories, closing it all with a lopsided 8-2 defeat. These last few episodes have definitely given me some ideas for the offseason, and I'll share my thoughts on that after we wrap up this double-A playoff run. Hartford trying to win the double-A Northeast Championship Series. It's currently 1-1 one one against Richmond. Let's get into Game 3, focusing on pitcher Tuki Toussaint. As I've talked about, I've been really impressed with his season overall. And there's the curveball that gets the chase for strike three. Bottom two, this time he gets the swing and a miss with the fastball clocked at 94. Tuki Toussaint, I think, took really good steps this year to becoming a difference maker at the major league level. Whether that's as a starter or a long reliever, I think that he's going to have a chance to give us really good major league innings of some kind. To start this game, absolutely dealing everything clicking for Tucson. Really good control of that curveball, which was an issue a year ago. Getting strikeouts with really any pitch he throws. The sinker, the curve, the fastball. This time jammed. Toglia makes the easy play, no problem. We go bottom five. Jacob Gonzalez is the batter, and this one is popped up. Richmond doing nothing versus Toussaint. It's 4 0. Next batter, Ryan Howard, hits a line drive to right, and that is the first hit and first base runner for Richmond. Perfect game through four and a third for Tuki Toussaint, and what happens next? Six, four, three, routine double play. Five excellent innings for Tuki Toussaint. His day obviously continues. The pitch count not even an issue. But this one's hammered to center. Deep drive, but it stays in the yard. Six scoreless. And they didn't even take him out of the game in the seventh for a pinch hitter. And Tuki Toussaint, have a day. Quality start, base hit right field. It's the best game, I think, of his professional career. Next batter, Adele Amador with the drive to deep right, and that one is out. Easy trip around the bases for Tuki Toussaint. Amador has been so good in the playoffs. That's his fourth home run. And by the way, Toussaint not finished, trying to make it through the seventh. And for the first time, control becoming a bit of a problem in this start as he does walk the first batter on four pitches but they don't take him out of the game trusting him to recover next batter popped up 0-2 Toussaint's gonna handle this one one away 
two batters later. 3-1 count, he falls behind Jacob Gonzalez, but a good fastball on the corner. Toussaint wants this one. And there's his final strike of the day, right to Toglia. Seven great innings for Tuki Toussaint. Impressive win for the Hartford Yard Goats. And they are now just one victory away from winning this series. But I am really impressed by Tuki Toussaint. I know it's double A competition. He should dominate and he is. But the concerns with Toussaint have always been control related. So I don't care who's in the batter's box. I want to see where his pitches are going if he's having all these deep counts. And in this game, it wasn't a problem. The curveball, he threw nine of them in this game. Not a single one missed in a bad spot. Now there were some fastballs that missed over the plate and better hitters are going to make you pay for those and there were some sliders as well. But only one walk in this game. I think that he's done a good job this season correcting that weakness in his game. So let's go to game four now. Hartford with a chance to put this one away. And we're going back to David Geronimo. 2-0 Hartford, top three. There's a drive to left field. Geronimo sends this one. It's deep and off the base of the wall. Another extra base hit. Two in scoring position for Hartford trying to open this game up. Michael Toglia already a home run in this game. Two and two count. And Toglia strikes out swinging. Two down. And that brings up Jose Gomez. Big opportunity for him, and he grounds it to second. Missed opportunity in this inning for Hartford. Two in scoring position, nobody down. They don't bring anybody home. We go to the fifth inning. Geronimo once again hitting it hard, but this time it's right at the left fielder. Oh, well. He's hit the ball hard every opportunity. We're going to take this one all the way now to the ninth inning. 4-3 Hartford, Tony Losey comes in looking for the save, but he gives up a base hit to begin the inning. Joe McCarthy to first base, two batters later. Tony Losey on his third pickoff attempt of the inning ends up getting McCarthy at first for the second out. A huge ninth inning pickoff with McCarthy getting too much of a lead. And now Losey can focus on Garrett Frechette, who drives one deep down the line, deep in the corner, and it's hooking foul. Almost tied the game. Two and two to Frechette, and Losey gets him looking, and that is the Double A Northeast Championship. It belongs to the Hartford Yard Goats. They win it three games to one. Great series overall, and exactly what I hope to see in this playoff run. A great showcase of players that I hope can take this Rockies team to the next level. And I'm hoping that it's not going to take a very long time. David Geronimo, Tuki Toussaint, Adele Amador, Michael Toglia. Those are the key players I really wanted to see. Zach Veen had some good hits in this series as well. Elijah Diori seemed to struggle, at least in the at-bats that I took with him. But overall, I feel like our minor league system got a lot stronger this year. And I'm excited to see what they can do to help us out a year from now. Now, I accidentally simmed a few games into the playoffs, so I lost the regular season stats. I forget those go away. But I think we know roughly where this team finished. Actually, a pretty good pitching team this year, much better than a year ago. If you just have an average offense to go with it, you're talking about being in the wild card hunt. But our hitting this year was far from average. Our big move in the offseason was to sign Javi Baez and build the offense around him. But he put in a season very similar to his last with the Cubs. And really, I think that Baez is more of like... A number five hitter on a really good team. I don't really think that we can build an offense specifically around him going forward. We brought in Andrew Heaney after his Cy Young award winning season at age 30. He didn't see any ratings go up this year and he was pretty solid. 
pitched in Coors all year. The home runs weren't a huge issue. He was a really good starting pitcher. Another move I thought would pay off was signing Adam Duvall, and this was a very bad move for us. He hit 187 this year, took a lot of at-bats that maybe could have gone to some other players and only hit 13 home runs. That's not why we signed him. Now, the free agent additions were kind of hit or miss for us, but what really concerns me about the current state of the rebuild is the lack of development of players we already had, specifically the A potential big league players, Garrett Hampson and Brendan Rodgers. When you run through their numbers, there's marginal improvement for Hampson. He's 27 years old, so there's still some time. Rodgers is 25, but you're hoping for... You know, some progression from year one to year two, and neither of these players took a significant step, and they are the high potential players we're supposed to be counting on. And then there's Ryan McMahon, who started out the whole series pretty hot. Got hurt, came back, wasn't the same. This year, took a step back from a year ago. Got sent down the AAA. Came back, and he was okay. A home run here and there, but that's not going to take this team to the next level. We have a lot of a home run here and there players. When it comes to players who did take a step forward this year, I was impressed by Rymel Tapia, who raised the average a little bit, but he did so hitting for more power than we had seen back in year one. He was a 2.1 war player. I was also impressed by Connor Joe, who might be a great utility player for us going forward and might still be an everyday starter but he's also 30 years old so we'll see if he can duplicate this a year from now so 67 and 95 is where everything ends up for us Yanni Chirinos, Derek Rodriguez, they were really good this year. I like the additions of Sir Anthony Dominguez in the bullpen. Darren O'Day was solid, but he's also older. The pitching looks like less of a concern now, and it's really all about the everyday position players. So my thoughts right now going into our second offseason is that we may need to do a bit more in free agency than I had thought. I thought Baez was going to be more of a cornerstone player to build around, when actually I think he's just kind of Miguel Sano level, where strikeouts and home runs are going to happen, but he's not who you want to build the offense around. I think we really need that high average, high on base player like they had in DJ LeMayhew. And one of my issues, I think, team building in general is sometimes I see average players and consider those positions to be filled as opposed to positions that you should still look at upgrading over. And there just aren't enough high level difference makers. There's not like a lot of guys on here that should be cut, but there's a lot of guys that we should be looking to upgrade over if given the chance. So I'm hoping that free agency gives us opportunities. And I'm also thinking about, you know, players that could be called up to play at the big league level, like David Geronimo, perhaps a day one starter next season. The Padres end up winning the World Series. So once again, it's a rival who is the reigning World Series champion. And we have a long way to go if we want a roster that's as talented and competitive as this. And if you see that age column, this team ain't going nowhere. We still have a lot of work to do. And I'll see you all in the offseason Friday afternoon as we try to take the Colorado Rockies to that next level. Leave your thoughts on what we should try to do this offseason. I'll be going through the comments looking for feedback to help out with my offseason plan. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the episode and are enjoying this series. Really want to get the next season out much quicker. I know that I got to speed things up here. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. More episodes are coming, and I will see you all again this Friday with our second offseason. Have a great day.